Got it. So, so what do we yeah, think about uh, today's topic? I liked what you put out there. Yes. In fact, yeah. I, I put it up on my screen here so I can refer to it as we go through the discussion. Looking well, forward I, to your to your talk on it, Tom. Well, I I you know I this this is the sort of thing that quite frankly I can talk on for uh, forever without shutting up. But, <laughs> oh, good. Yeah, I'll be right back. I'm going to go see if I can find a book that I wanted to show. But if you uh, if you want to hear me talk forever on it. Uh, just explore my YouTube channel a little bit because I did do a presentation at Good Shepherd. Mm -hmm. I think it was three three parts, maybe four parts, on uh, all facets of liturgy. And mm -hmm. you know, I think, and one of the key things is how is the Eucharist central to our. Um, to our spirituality, to our Christian lives, to our Christian mission, and uh, and I explore and, and to the sacrament sacramental life. You know, how all of the sacraments, in some way, lead to and derive from uh, the Eucharist. And but once you say that, you kind of have to say, well, how how does that happen? How is it doing it? I don't know if it's uh, relevant uh, or not. Tom, but I would love some time to, you may not be able to do it today, but discuss the uh, the liturgy of benediction. Mm. Not today. No, we get enough of it on our plate, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, the question with the liturgy of benediction, I think, is bound up in the whole question of Eucharistic adoration. And um, the church, especially after the Vatican Council, had some pretty clear things to say about the place of benediction and the place of Eucharistic adoration, which has been pretty much ignored, sadly. But which what, document was that in, Tom? In the documents, remember? Yeah, I think Gaudium et Spes or no key to that. I think would be the. Um, One of the instructions, uh, post-conciliar instructions on uh, liturgical reform. Okay. The one specifically titled Eucharisticum Mysterium. Okay. But going into that would be mm -mm. a whole nother question. No, I, I'm not implying that we should do that today, but it just, uh, it's an interesting, um, it's a, a very interesting um, uh, area of discussion, particularly in relationship to the, what is the real presence and why one would become an adorer otherwise, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> well, anyway, now what I'd, what I'd kind of like to do is obviously introduce everybody as usual when we when nine o'clock comes around and then, um, pardon me for munching on a granola bar here. <laughs> and then go into the prayer and have a couple of things to say about the particular prayer that I chose. And I'd simply like to you know, sort of start with these these questions which um you know are kind of alive because of the communion wars uh that uh, are generating so much heat and not much light in catholic religious realms and political realms and you know adjacent to that is the the uh, document that the bishops are going to be voting, considering and voting on in their, in their uh, meeting next week that is supposed to be a 
uh, teaching and reflection on the Eucharist and its place in our lives. My fear is it's going to be true, but so limited that it doesn't really fully address the all the issues that come up, especially with regard to this concern about real presence from that Pew survey, Pew report a few years ago, which I think is extremely flawed, um, where they said, you know, the the majority, the vast majority of people who identified themselves with Catholics uh, identified the, the Eucharist in terms of symbol rather than uh, real presence and transubstantiation. So I'll kind of try to get into that and then, then open it up for you know whatever discussion. So welcome back, Jan. What uh, what kind of gift did you bring? Well, I didn't because I can't find it. I mean, I might have like given it away to somebody that needed it or something, but it was um, a book on the Eucharist that that Ruth, remember Ruth Murphy? She recommended because because I want before I became a Eucharistic minister, I wanted to ex, you know explore it a little bit more because I'd mm -hmm. been so away from it for so long so mm -hmm. and it was a good one and i can't remember who the author is but it was just a you know relatively simple book and mm -hmm. it helped mm -hmm. so okay. very good kathy creighton is coming on there she is Her press photo, at least. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I don't see her yet. Oh, I do. There, we, there she is. Her mic is live now. Yeah. Hi, Kathy. Hi there. Hi, Kathy. There she is. Hi, hi, hi Kathy. How are you? Hi. How's everybody? Very good. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm going to have to, uh, I just wanted to come in and just say that I'm probably going to have to do this on Facebook while I work because a project just came up, but I've got my coffee and my spirit, so I'm here. All right, All right. wonderful. And I wanted to just check in to let you know that I'm still here, still engaged, and um, happy to see everybody. And I love your green, Bob. I'm, I'm sorry, John. Oh yeah, love yeah, your right. green. Yeah. Really nice. Well, we're still in ordinary time. That's right. We really are, aren't we? One more week of it, right? One more week, or no, no. Yeah. Three more weeks. 28th, more weeks. 28th is the 28th, first time. Right. 28th, yeah. right. I'll right. switch to my purple shirt. You know, it's funny. I just wanted to just share this, is that last year in, in a Bible study group that I belong to, um, I was indicating around this time last year, I was saying, you know, I feel like I'm on the decline. And we were already talking about uh, the liturgical year. And, and I guess I didn't put the two together, but maybe that's why I felt like I was like in a decline sort of sort of mood, you know? Mm -hmm. But anyway, yes. So uh, anyway, I, I'm just really looking forward, Father Tom, to hear your your conversation on um, Eucharist. I'm really looking forward to that. Well, so, the, the thing I have to pray for is that it doesn't just become a three-hour monologue. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You mean like a sort of a, a liturgical filibuster? Right, right. Right. So I think anyway, I think I'll try to, you know, talk according to those bullet points that I put into the, um, yeah, mm -hmm. in, into the letter. I got them right up on my screen yeah. here so I can refer okay. to them. And then Jenny's question about, um, about children receiving the sacrament. And then she, I think she said something in a previous email also about you know, her own feelings of unworthiness. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think that that too was a bit of a product of, of what I think is a, well, you could say faulty or you could say inadequate or, you know, our education gave us part of the picture but didn't give us the whole picture. 
Or, you know, it was used to try to, again, discipline children in a way to say, oh, you need to be good and worthy and, yeah, you know, to, to be able to receive and all that other stuff, which mm-hmm. changes as you mature. Your, yeah. The Santa you know, Claus idea of God. Exactly. You better watch out. You better not. <laughs> but, also, right. but also, I'm glad that I just accepted the reality, the truth, the really profound truth that I will never be worthy. <laughs> and that as long as I, that I will never be worthy of receiving Jesus in the sense that I'll ever be good enough. I'll never, you know, at this, in, li- in this life anyway. And so you just accept that and you, and you, my, dis- my disposition toward the Eucharist is that it will heal me and it will compel me. It will give me the grace to, to be better than I was yesterday or, you mm-hmm. know, Mm-hmm. So that that's how I kind of look at it, and but I I don't I don't even think about, I don't even go there about am I worthy or is anybody else worthy? I don't even go there, you know. It's it's just you know, yeah. That's my my position. I'd love to have you say that on, on Facebook, but you're, you may not be able to stick around long enough. No. Um, but maybe I can put it in the comment section of Facebook. Uh, you could. I'm, or I'm, you well, I'm taking us live right now. Okay. Um, so we are now live on Facebook. And uh, welcome to everybody who is on Facebook. Welcome to those who may have joined already. And definitely welcome to those who are um, in the process of joining. What do I need to do? And here? Uh, welcome to everybody yeah. who is. Okay, I had to mute it. There is one person already on on Facebook with us, so so we'll stop the live stream, and there we go. Well, that was it. I didn't get. I rambled, but I didn't get a lot in quite as much in that I wanted to but but we got some good discussion well i think it's it's good to continue this one um next week yeah mm-hmm. because there is so much more uh to it and a lot that uh, that we couldn't get to but yeah now you know denise you sent uh and i wasn't thinking of this while we were uh, you, you sent a um uh, something from your archdiocese, mm-hmm. uh, which uh, is available on the diocesan website. I don't know if I sent the links out to that or not. I think I was preparing to and never did get around to it. Um, but, yeah, I sent it originally, but I don't know if anybody still had it. Yeah. So um, what the difficulty that I have with that is, and we kind of alluded to it, but uh, you know, it's it's perfectly true and right as far as it goes. Uh, but to stop with the personal worthiness and personal, you know, relationship with Jesus Christ, um, it there is more to real presence than 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 that. So it it's mm-hmm. and and my own feeling is that that um, the bishops tend to stop there. You know, it's almost like reinforcing the, the, the idea that the Eucharist is a, a holy commodity that the church gives to people if they have the right dispositions. Mm-hmm. And that's not untrue, but it, it's, it's only a part of the picture. And without a completion of the picture, as far as what um, uh, that the Eucharist is a sacrament of communion, uh, meaning union, deep union with the body of Christ and the whole body of Christ and all the activity of the body of Christ, that you know that that dimension is sometimes lost when we just keep thinking of, of 
me receiving Jesus. Right. So that, so it's, it's, it's good as far as it goes. And I think it's important that we, you know, know that, mm -hmm. uh, know those things, but to step beyond them too. Anyway. Yeah. On the, on the other, I guess, on the political side with all this that's going on, um, it just seems so odd to me um, that, like, when did we all become judge and jury of everybody else kind of thing? Mm -hmm. and, and, it, and it's a little bit disturbing to think that, you know, some of these bishops or uh, even other people within the parishes that, you know, uh, are, you know, pointing fingers and, well, they shouldn't, and they didn't, and they didn't. And it kind of goes back to that whole thing, like, you know, casting the first stone, I guess, you know, um, I mean, I, I could never feel comfortable myself judging someone else uh, for anything like that. And at the end of the day, we all know the, um, for lack of a better term, um, the rules of, you know, uh, the the Catholic Church and and uh, receiving communion, and so uh, everybody everybody knows the rules. And if you choose to go up there and take, you know, who who is anybody else? To, you can't have a a priest stopping every person and going, "Did you do this? Did you do that? <laughs> you know, are you okay with this? Because right. I'm not gonna." You know, I mean, that's essentially what they're saying. You know, I mean, I can't imagine having a, a a priest, a bishop, the pope, or anyone else standing there and looking every single person in the eye and going, are, you know, are you supposed to be taking communion? Right, <laughs> you know, right, right. I mean, never that's get the service. Yeah, that, and that's the individual person. If they're, yeah. you know, they know the rules, and if they're if they're going to take it anyway, then that's. Whatever the consequences there it's may or may not them. be it's from that is, is up to them. I mean, it's exactly. kind of like the COVID thing, you know, it's kind of a, you know, everybody knows the rules, but if you're going to go out, you're going to, you know, dance around without a mask or a vaccine or whatever else you're doing that, you know, the rules. So, you know, the consequences of those uh, yeah. rules, you know. And sadly, the other dimension of that is that the consequences uh, go far beyond your own personal health correct. and well-being. Right. And I think now, correct. No, yeah. and one, I mean, just jumping off what you're saying, Denise, too, I mean, sort of like what I said earlier, each parish is different. And then also yes. everybody's, you know, I mean, Father Colum and I used to talk about this all the time. Everybody's religious education, especially today, is at different levels. Mm -hmm. And so you've got people who are so, um, you know, like, rigid and how they follow the rules and then other people might be a little more you know different or or might feel a little more mature in what they're doing and so um you know it's it, it changes you know people's interpretation of the rules changes and so you've got that going on as well you know and if someone presents for the eucharist i mean this is what father calm and i totally agree is somebody is really in need they should be there, you know, because they shouldn't be denied it. And and again, which priest knows every single person in the oh. parish to say, no, you can't, you know. Yes. yes. So it's unrealistic. And and, it and is. The, the whole thing is, you know, it's pharisaical. You know, I mean, this is this is so neo-pharisaical. And yeah. I want to I want to make an observation that I think the political polarization in our country, particularly has infected the churches as well. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you have in, you know, well, you, you mentioned this parish or that parish. I mean, there was a time when every parish was the same. And you know, everything was, was, you know, you go from one to the other, everything was, and now it's all very uh, heterodox, mm -hmm. you know? And, and I just think that um, we are subject to, you know, subject to evil and death, as it says in the canon of our mass. And unfortunately, part of this is the infection caused by one, very misguided political leader whose name I will not mention. Right. I will not dignify it. Uh, but he so misled everybody 
that it has become an infection yeah. and that has infected our churches. Mm -hmm. And it's a shame uh, that, that that's the case. I mean, we have had in the Anglican the Episcopal tradition, we've had a lot of, you know, um, uh, schisms, if you will, based on certain other things, et cetera, et cetera. And um, now we have in, in the Roman communion, we have this business over the Tridentine mass types and the, you know, that and the young priests that, that are coming up to, that are all in that ballpark and all of this infighting, it destroys unity. Mm -hmm. it, 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 it just, it breaks down the communio sanctorum. And it, it's, it's a shame that we've allowed this to enter. You have bishops fighting bishops. Yeah, and, and, uh, and the fuller dimension of that is that, you know, the, the church is not a community of self-perfection. Uh, so what all of this infighting means is that our mission to be leaven in the world is severely compromised, if not destroyed. Mm. Absolutely. You know, we, Absolutely right. or, or to say this, um, the synoptic gospels have the words of institution over the, the, the bread and wine and the distribution of the, of, of the bread and wine, take this and eat it. This is my body given up for you and this is my blood poured out for you. Uh, John's gospel in the very same place has this is how they will know that you are my disciples by the way you love one another. Yeah. And when we yeah. show that we do not love one another quite obviously the rest of the world is looking at us saying, well, nothing to see there. Right. And it cancels mission, as you said. The you know, the one side is, is it's a positive, the other is a negative, and they cancel each other out. Yeah. It yeah. comes, you know, and therefore mission comes. The devil's very happy about this, by the way, in case you haven't checked in mm -hmm. with him recently. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, I mean he's just He's just rubbing his hands for glee. Just let them destroy each other, you know. Yeah. Are you and, in frequent and, communication and, with? And, and and we, <laughs> I, yeah. Oh yeah. Well, Lucifer. He's, he's he has Netflix. a weekly Zoom call. Yeah, he's on Netflix. He's on yeah. Netflix. Yeah. But the, the serious point is that you know nobody takes the Pope seriously when he makes these. But he he doesn't. He won't be a, 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 a you know a demagogue. He he says these things very lightly, like who might it judge. You know what I'm saying? And the things he said to Biden, which made it into the press, should be the signal to every Catholic bishop to, to knock it off. You yeah. know, the ones that are Peprocki and these people that are, you know. Um, right. So it's, uh, I just read about Dan Durbin. Uh, you probably saw that in the paper, huh? You know, and he's being refused communion in, in uh, his Springfield, Illinois diocese. Mm. And it's incredible. And there's like, here's a you talk about a soul transplant. You know, Peprocki followed some other bishop who was the same way. And then the guy who followed Peprocki. So it's, it's like a, it's like a, you know, something that's infected there. And um, he's afraid to go to any church in, in, in that diocese. He goes over to the Chicago Archdiocese to go to communion. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's crazy, man. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. It's crazy. And it, but it bespeaks how the infection of a certain person has spilled over and it shouldn't, it, we shouldn't have this happening in our churches. Our churches are sacred, right? Yeah. 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 Well, and I think, you know, there are just certain people in the church that even before he who will not be named came on the, on the scene, you know, that started all of this, you know, and I mean, and I think Francis tried to put him in his place by bringing him to Italy. And, you know, he's turned out to be even more active and tried to do something with Bannon who, and Bannon, you know, he, he even he got disgusted with Bannon and shut him down. So, <laughs> you know, I mean, you know, so those things were, have been prevalent for, you know, as we say, you know, it's the tip of the iceberg, you know, the last four years. 
but it's but it what it's raised is all the stuff that has been underlying for so long that we've not dealt with mm -hmm. yeah. including the diversity you know yeah. so and including how do we handle issues even very very serious issues of um morality in relation to government and public policy yeah yeah uh, and because you know we, we 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 do need to work towards a more just society in which in which these life issues are also upheld uh, and human life is upheld and respected as well as all of the other elements of uh, environment and justice and 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 so on and so forth we need we need to work towards that kind of society but to what extent should um, for a Christian legislation uh, enter into that and how do we you know influence what is behind the legislation without becoming as we see has is so toxic throughout history without becoming ourselves a theocracy yeah yeah well we still have separation of church and state and it's beginning to blur a little bit too much uh, you know at certain points in time yeah but it, and even there that's all there's always been contentious issues between right. church and state too yeah, so. yeah. But that's the dialectic that's there that, you yeah. know, is healthy oftentimes, but it's become, as as John said, toxic, you know, it's really become toxic at this yeah. point. Yeah. That said, shall we call it a day? Very nice. Okay. Very nice discussion. Yeah, yeah good one. Good going. Thank, thank you. Thank you all. And uh, so Denise, Jan and John, God bless you. And uh, and I will push that little red button. <laughs> See you next week. Have bye a good bye. week.